Hello and welcome to the demonstration for the drone project. First, let me show you how I built the drone. In order to do that, here's the rewind. First, let me show you all the major components of the drone. I have a FlySky FSI6 RC transmitter at 2.4 GHz. Uh, that came with FSIA6 receiver. Later, I switched to IA6B receiver because the upgraded version has PPM module uh, where all the signals are multiplexed and sent via a single RC channel. I have a 3 cell LiPo battery at 2200 mAh for UAV drones and a decent balance charger for the LiPo battery. It takes about 3 hours at 800 mAh to fully charge the battery and the maximum flight time for our drone is around 15 minutes. I have a Pixhawk flight controller with a 32-bit ARM Cortex M4 processor, built-in gyroscope, accelerometer, and barometer. It has ports for GPS, telemetry, USB output, SBUS, as well as PPM interface with 8 main output pins for the motors and 6 auxiliary output pins for additional controls like the servos or the switches. I have 4 30 amps ESCs to control the speeds of the motors. I have 4 brushless motors that is rated 1000 kV, meaning it will turn at 1000 revolutions per minute when 1 volt is applied to it with no load. I have a power module to distribute power to the ESCs and the flight controller. I have 4 propellers with me, 2 of them are for the clockwise rotations while the other 2 are for the counterclockwise rotation. I have a GPS module along with a 3DR radio telemetry for wireless communication between the ground station and the flight controller. Starting off with the power distribution board which came infused with the frame making the assembly process a little easier. I put some solder in all the positive and negative endpoints of the power distribution board and this is how it looks uh, once you are done. Next up is soldering ESCs to the power distribution board. I put some solder in the wire itself to make it easier to bond with the board. Then I repeat the process for each of the four ESCs and this is how it looks at the end. Next I attach motors to the frame using the screws provided by the manufacturers. I repeat the process for each of the four motors. Then I screw the frame with the power distribution mode and make sure it is sturdy. Each of the motors have three 3.5mm male banana bullet which needs to be plugged into the ESC. This decides the clockwise or the counterclockwise movement of the motors. Once that is done, I need to provide power to the power distribution board. So, I saw the XT60 connected to the board, which would then be connected to the power module. Finally, I attach the top compartment of the frame. Finally, I attach all the functional components of the drone. I start with placing the GPS module at the top of the stand to have the least signal disturbance. Then I cut a small piece of cushioning foam sheet to reduce the impact of the flight controller while landing. I attach additional uh, peripherals including a buzzer, safety hardware switch, the power distribution module and the landing gear for the drone. Then I attach the receiver and wire it to the proper PPM channel from the receiver to the flight controller. Then I attach all the peripherals to the Pixhawk flight controller. Unfortunately, there was a mismatch with the battery connectors. So I had to switch a female XT60 connector with a male XT60 connector. I solder and use shrink tubes for safety. Uh, finally, I attached the heaviest component that is the battery to the drone. I plug the 3 pin servo connectors from each of the ESCs to the proper output pins of the Pixhawk flight controller such that the two edges and motors spin in an alternative motion that is one clockwise and the other counterclockwise. Then I plug the USB cable from the flight controller to the PC for configuration and beta testing via mission planner software. Once all the sensors are calibrated, I plug the battery and test the motors using the joystick channel of the transmitter. Once all the ESCs and motors look synchronized, I attach propellers corresponding to the rotation of the motors. And finally, I arm the vehicle, which is when the motors start spinning at the minimum throttle position. Here is the footage of the vehicle being armed. The pre-flight check includes wire connection inspection, retightening of the motors, and especially the propellers. Here I arm the vehicle by leaning the throttle stick towards the bottom right corner and try to lift the drone to see if anything is wrong before doing any automation or acrobatic or geofencing modes. The project is aimed towards automation and delivery. We combine drone, delivery and automation with the hot and happening technologies. 
There seem to be limitless possibilities of the drone, so I wanted to explore and face challenge of added dimension of flight as opposed to RC cars. Here are some footages of our drone without any load. I try a few acrobatic moves to test the drone stabilization. Later I will add a camera to the drone and record some footages. I have attached a GoPro to the drone and I am testing to see if it can handle the added weight before flying high. Now it's time to do an actual test with a GoPro attached on top of the drone. You have to circle it. And here are some footages from the camera. We are currently testing geofencing mode that has a hard-coded altitude restriction. Once it breaches the altitude, it should hold its position. The drone has now breached the altitude restriction and now it is currently holding its position. We are doing another round of flight tests with GoPro attached on top of the drone to see if we can handle some acrobatic moves. So right now we are in the geofencing mode. I'll turn on the drone and now it should, if I fly above 10 meters, it should return back to the land. And now as you can see, it's trying to come back to the landing position. A little bit off but it is now in the land before we try the automated delivery mode I will talk you through the delivery mechanism for the drone we have a server attached to the frame with server head glued to a lead string the string has a hooked package or a tennis ball for this instance and currently supported by a zip tie on the other end once a proper command is sent to the flight controller, it will turn the servo 90 degrees, which in turn releases the support from the zip tie and gravity does the rest, ultimately simulating a prototype of this automated package delivery. Now we will test a few automated nodes and eventually complete the project of automated drone delivery. Before we begin, please note the starting point that is somewhere around the middle of the yellow stripe. Currently we are testing one of the automation modes called return to launch where I will fly the drone for a while and then turn the switch for return to launch. Now I'll return to, return to launch. Mode active. Now I have no control over it. Now the drone should return back to launch because I am not doing it. Yeah. As you can see, it's landing on its own. And it landed successfully. Now we are testing a fully automated mode where I have set a few GPS coordinates. The drone will follow the script starting from takeoff. 
the commands are set in such a way that it takes off goes to the designated GPS coordination point one then to the next point where it lands and from there it returns back to the launch without my input and as you can see I have no control over it I'm just in the auto, mo auto mode it's gonna go to the next waypoint it's gonna land and then it should take off again once uh, it lands so we are in the uh, auto mode uh, yeah we are in the delivery you can prototype. leave the uh, controller yeah, right there I can leave it right there and then it's the controller right there and you can see that as you can see it automates take off now it should return back to the land position uh -huh. oh shit you see <laughs> you got it oh, oh my god Oh, my God. Have to... oh. oh wow. Finally, we are testing our project's main objective, that is automated drone package delivery. Here, I switch to auto mode before takeoff and let the drone do its tricks, reading the scripts uploaded to the flight controller. It has a tennis ball hooked into the servo that acts as a package for our prototype. The script is set in such a way that it will take off, goes to the destination position, lands, drops the package, takes off again and return to launch. Since we have a radio telemetry communication, you can track the drone using Mission Planner software as you could see at the bottom right corner of the screen. You're gonna go slowly and gonna, gonna drop the package. You can s now you're gonna land it first and then definitely gonna this is automatic mod and okay it got it stopped for it already dropped the packages and it's coming back to base now that we are done with the good parts let me talk you through the challenges i faced throughout the drone project whilst playing failure footages in the background first and foremost our drone is far from perfect I can blame half of it on my pilot skills, whereas the other half is to be blamed on manufacturers. Talking about the hardware challenges first, I've had quite a few parts like the receiver and the telemetry not having proper connections, spent hours trying to debug but the optimal solution was to buy a new one from a different manufacturer. Other technical challenges include outdated documentation for parts and components, software, connectivity and calibration issues. One time the transmitter decided to reverse the channel with for no reason which needed multiple crashes and a few days to figure that out. This crash against the tree is the culprit of reverse channel output. This led to malfunctioning motors as the propellers weren't quite spinning at the same rate as the motors. This required us to purchase the entire motor as these tiny parts were too specific to be found in any hardware stores. I had to race against time as I kept crashing and purchasing replacement products which took its sweet little time as it had to be an online purchase. So we are in the auto mode and the drone should fly on its own. This is the last recorded footage before I lost control of the drone as it went outside my eyesight and crashed somewhere. Here I am trying the geofencing mode where it breached the altitude restriction and it was supposed to return to land, however it got away from me and I was too late on the override. After tracking the last GPS location, we were able to locate the drone at the rooftop of one of the neighbors. But I found a drone uh, being broken down. I mean, the frame is broken, the GPS module is broken, uh, the frame stand is broken, and it's pretty sturdy stand. Uh, it must have had a really bad impact in order to break that. Uh, I've got a missing telemetry, where I've only got the plastic box, the actual telemetry is missing. Uh, I have uh, broken propellers uh, uh, luckily I have the flight controller working and I also have a battery intact and I have got missing servo head and, uh, and the lead that was intact with it but this is how our project looks like at the end for a really bad landing uh, hopefully or thankfully we got all the footage before